We're here at CBS 2016 in uh, Nairobi in Kenya and I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Andrew Rugege who's Regional Director for Africa for the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. Andrew, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you, Max. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. It's always a pleasure to be in your studio. And uh, we're here in your region, so the, <laughs> the region uh, that you're director of. So I just really wanted to talk to you about uh, this particular conference, this symposium here. We're here in Kenya. Why was Kenya chosen as a venue? It's worked very well, but I'd like to hear it from you. <laughs> uh, for several reasons, Max. Uh, Kenya is a great destination, uh, not only for conferences, but also for the experience of the participants. Now, the uh, tourism in this country is renowned, but a bit more to what ITU does. Uh, it is a great uh, venue because they also have a lot to show. They tell me they have a lot to learn, as you heard from the Deputy President yesterday, but I think all things considered, uh, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot being done on the ground. Two weeks before I was here, I was invited to, the, to their uh, uh, public uh, hearing on the ICT policy of the country. So there is a lot to learn. And in terms of this particular subject, capacity building, why is that important to ITU? Um, capacity building is important to everybody. And uh, the ITU being the uh, specialized agents of the United Nations, uh, capacity building is very important, uh, not least to achieving uh, the uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, but also, uh, the membership, when they get together, they determine, for example, uh, the priorities for the region, the regional initiatives. Uh, regional initiative number one uh, for Africa is capacity building, institutional and personal capacity building. But that notwithstanding, uh, I think, uh, to come to uh, a continent where uh, capacity building is probably uh, most needed, uh, I think, is to encourage that continent uh, to uh, achieve more in terms of capacity building, especially in this area of, of ICT that is new to the continent. They say the highest growth is in the, some of the African countries, but that requires that we build the capacity of people. And ITU is the leading organization that uh, provides uh, technical assistance to member states in capacity building. Now, there's been some fascinating sessions here, some great discussions. I wanted mm. to find out from you what have been the main takeaways from this? Uh, let me talk about the session that I personally moderated. Uh, the one I personally moderated was about uh, coping with uh, capacity building needs in this changing environment. As you know, every day there is some innovation in ICT. Every day there is some requirement for ICT in a development area. So how do you keep up with uh, the skills that are needed? And what came out yesterday was fascinating. Uh, I had several uh, capacity building institutions there, but I also had private sector. I had Intel, uh, I had Cisco on board. So what came out was number one, uh, there needs to be partnership. Partnership uh, in, from the different points of view to see Cisco and Intel and these institutions coming together to, to partner on capacity building was very important. But number two, what came out was that we needed to be sensitive as capacity builders, to be sensitive to the demand. What is the demand? Are you going to produce uh, historians where you have uh, the biggest need in ICT? Or are you going to uh, produce, uh, uh, in this particular time, uh, rocket scientists when your need is in big data. So what came out was that we needed to be sensitive uh, that uh, the supply of this capacity building needed to be meeting a certain demand and a certain niche and that way people can be more productive. And 
it, from the participants themselves? Have you been getting some good feedback? Absolutely. I, I ran out of time because there were more questions than there, were, there was time. And it wasn't only questions, it was input and appreciation for uh, what was being discussed and the ideas that were being uh, brought on board. And I, I only spoke about the session that I, I, I uh, uh, moderated, but all sessions were like that. We had a ministerial session, uh, a ministerial round table, where we had about the policy that is being implemented in the different countries around, around the world really, not simply on the continent, but around the world. And that, that was uh, fascinating. The issues of uh, the need for light touch regulation, the need for uh, public-private partnership, all those things came through converging on the subject of capacity building. It's not just Africa, but it's, we've attracted participants here from a, a, a whole global environment here. What do you hope people will go home thinking and talking about? Number one, that they are not alone. We know that this is, uh, this is an issue to be dealt with, uh, but I think everybody learned that there was a little bit of what was required that they were doing, and there was a little bit that, that they could learn uh, from the other country, uh, and that was an important lesson. But the other important lesson was uh, what ITU does and what it is able to help uh, to, to accompany, we don't use uh, the word help because we are not helping with anything, but we accompany the countries in achieving their objectives. And in this case, in achieving uh, capacity building right from the early levels of education through to postgraduate, uh, there is a need for capacity building, especially, especially as the message that we are giving is that ICT is not an end in itself. It is a facilitator, it's a catalyst for achieving goals that improve a better quality of life for people. Andrew Gay, thank you very much indeed. It is my pleasure, as always.